Hello students. Today we will discuss the topic flatness test measurement by interference principle. So how the flatness of an object can be tested with the interference principle. So for testing the flatness of a surface an optical flat will be used. So what is this optical flat? It is a disc of glass or cords, the faces of which are highly polished and they are flat. So when you measure with a micrometer, you can see that the flatness is very very high for this optical flat. So for testing of surface flatness, an optical flat will be used. So what is this optical flat? Optical flat is a disc of glass or cords whose faces are highly polished. So when we put into close contact with a nearly flat surface so we can observe bands, dark bands are seen which form a contour of map on the surface exactly similar to the contour on a map of the land. So when we put in contact with the surface whose flatness has to be tested, we will observe bands are formed. Okay. So these bands will form a contour of map, map of the surface which is similar to the contour of the land which is being tested. So here there is an optical flat which is slightly inclined to the surface which has to be tested. So we can see that when a ray of light is entering the optical flat at point A, so this is the point A and the ray of light is entering through this point into the optical flat. So it will be partially reflected at point B into line BC. So this is B and this is C. So it will get reflected into partly not completely partly reflected from this point BC and partly it will be transmitted to be reflected at the point D. So here the light after entering at the point A it will be partly deflected to BC and Partly it will be transmitted to point D which is here to get transmitted and it will be transmitted to D to get reflected to the path D E F. So here this is D, this is D, this is E and this is F. So along this path it will get reflected. So the rays which are emerging from this direction that is D E F have slightly different direction so they have different direction you can see that they are moving a bit away from this line B C so they have different direction but they can be brought together by an optical system such as the eye so we can get them together so they have a different direction we can get them together by an optical system. So the difference between the length of the paths taken by the two rays is BD plus DE. So the difference between the length of these paths will be given by this addition of BD this direction and D. So here there will be a bright band formed. The difference in the path takes so if this distance is an even number of half the wavelength then the rays will be in phase and a bright band can be seen. So if bright band will be seen. So here we can see that when this distance BD and DE is an even number of half the wavelength then this rays will be in phase and a bright band will be seen. So 
at another position g if the path distance or the path difference h this h k and l is an odd number of half the wavelength then a dark band will emerged from this direction that is this direction m so the dark and the bright fringes in this case will be straight because the surface flat and the fringes always follow a line of constant distance between the surface and the lower face of the flat so the bright and the dark fringes will be straight because the surface flat and the fringes will follow a line of constant distance they will follow a line of constant distance between the surface which is being tested and the lower surface of the optical flat the straight fringes will always lie parallel to the line of contour or the line of minimum displacement of the optical flat from the surface so these fringes or the uh, bright and dark fringes will lie parallel to the line of minimum displacement of the optical flat from the surface so the line or the rate of separation of the lower surface of the flat and uh, the surface which is being tested depends on the angle do theta of the air wedge so there will be an angle between this lower surface of the optical flat and this surface which is being tested so these the rate of separation will depend on this angle that is do theta so if this angle is too large the rate of separation is correspondingly too large and the fringes will be so close together they cannot be distinguished from one another so if the angle is too small then the fringes will be far apart so what happens if they are far apart then the pitch of the fringes varies inversely with respect to the angle do theta so the path difference from one fringe to the next similar fringe is one whole wavelength that is hertz so when this angle do theta is very small then the vertical displacement of the surface becomes half the wavelength or half hertz the number of fringes and the change in elevation between the optical flat and the surface can be calculated by counting the number of fringes and by multiplying the length of one half wavelength of light used so for example if the wavelength of the incident light is given as 0.5 micrometer is equal to half the wavelength so we can write is as 0.25 micrometer and if the number of fringes is equal to 3 then the separation can be calculated like this 3 into half the wavelength that is 3 into 0.25 that is nothing but 0.75 micrometer so by knowing the wavelength of the light used the inaccuracies in the surface can be measured this is all about the flatness test measurement by interference principle using an optical flat